SwiftUI lets us create views with exact sizes. For example, we could say here in our view body, I'm gonna render an image with an example image inside. I'll make this thing resizable. I'll make this thing be scaled to fit. And I'll give this thing a fixed width of 300 and a fixed height of 300. Now, all this works great if we wanna have fixed sized views. But very often we want images that will automatically scale up to fill more of the screen in one or maybe both dimensions. And that is, rather than saying I want exactly 300 points of width, what you really wanna say is make this image fill 80% of the width of the screen. One option is to use the container relative frame modifier, which we covered back in project eight. But SwiftUI also has a dedicated type for this work called Geometry Reader, and it's remarkably powerful and fills in places where container relative frame won't work. We'll go into much more detail on this thing shortly, but for now, what we need to do is exactly one job to make sure our image fills some percentage of width of its container view. Geometry Reader is a view just like all the others we've used so far, except when we make it, we'll hand it a geometry proxy object to use. This lets us query the environment. How big is the container? What position is our view in? Are there any safe area insets? And so on. In principle, that seems simple. But in practice, you've got to use Geometry Reader very carefully. It'll automatically expand, take up all the available space in your layout, and then position its own content aligned to the top left corner. For example, we can make an image that's 80% the width of the screen with a fixed height of 300. We can wrap this image here in a geometry reader with that proxy coming in, like so. You'll see it jump straight away, top left corner, like I said. And then for the image's width, I'm gonna say, you use a proxy.size.width times 0.8. So it'd be now 80% the size of the screen. If you want to, you can even remove the height entirely. We've given SwiftUI enough information that it can automatically figure out the height for us. It knows the original width of the image. It knows our target width, that's this one here. It knows our content mode, it's scaled to fit. So it understands how the target height of the image will be proportional to the target width. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, how is this any different from using a container relative frame? The problem is that container relative frame has a very precise definition of what constitutes a container. It might be the whole screen. It might be a navigation stack. It might be a list or a scroll view and so on. But it won't consider, at least not a time of writing of this thing, that a H stack or a V stack is a container. They'll be ignored as containers. And this has caused all sorts of problems when using views in stacks, because you can't easily subdivide them using container relative frame. For example, we could write some code, place two views in the stack, one being given a fixed width and the other using a container relative frame. So I'll say uh, here, let's replace John Reader with a stack. Uh, the start of that is a text important with a uh, frame width of 200 and a background of blue, like so. But the image, of course, we haven't got access to the geometry proxy anymore. So I'll say instead, this thing has a container relative frame using the horizontal axis. Give me the size and the axis coming in. And I'll say your size should be the container size times 0.8. And that's not gonna lay out well as you can see because this container relative frame looks for the nearest container and it's not the H stack. That does not count as being a container here. So it looks up to read the whole screen width for its size. Meaning this image is made 80% the size of the screen, despite this text next to it requiring 200 points. On the other hand, using a geometry reader here will subdivide the space correctly. If we say, for example, this thing is wrapped in a geometry reader with a proxy coming in, like so and then replace this container relative frame with a regular frame using the width of our proxy dot size dot width times 0.8. Now, that is now laying out better. The image is now visible on the screen. The text isn't being pushed off the screen anymore, but it has a different problem. Our image is now aligned to the top left corner of our geometry reader. Fortunately, this is easily solved. 
If you ever want a center of view inside a geometry reader, rather than lying to the top left corner, which is the default, add a second frame that makes it fill the full space of the container. So here we have our current frame. Below that, I'll say we have a frame here with a width of our proxy.size.width and a height of our proxy.size.height. And boom, it's centered all correctly.